Good morning, my name is Kenny Hubble and I'm one of the pastors on staff here at Palmasia Presbyterian Church and I am grateful for worship this morning. This is really one of my favorite Sundays all year long. It is Youth Sunday, which means the young people of this church and community will lead us in liturgy and prayers and scripture readings and importantly, the senior speeches we get to hear. Our seniors who have experienced so much in the life of the church are now going to share how that has impacted their faith, and I'm grateful for the good and hard work that they've done in preparation for those speeches. This is a Sunday that we get to partake in a lot of energy and a lot of excitement and really hope for the future of the church. These young people are who we will see in our pews in the years to come, and thank you, Palmasia Presbyterian Church, for being such a welcoming community to our young people. We are so glad and blessed to be a part of this particular particular church and the ways that you have supported us are truly generous. Thank you for being in worship today.
Please pray with me. God of hope, love, joy, and peace, we come into worship continuing to celebrate the resurrection. We give you thanks for new life, fresh starts, and unrelenting grace. We ask that your spirit move through us today as we join together in prayer, song, and testimony. Thank you for the ways that you come into our lives and transform us. Help us discern all things with love, compassion, and care for our neighbors, our friends, and the strangers we do not yet know. All glory be to you, now and always. Amen. Our first scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke in the 24th chapter, verses 36 to 43. Hear now God's holy word. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Jody. I am the youth intern here at PCPC. So I work with the middle schoolers and the high schoolers. Those are our bigger kids. It's a lot of fun. Um, but thank you for being in church here today. It makes church better for us when you're here. Today's going to look a little different, you might notice. You won't see Pastor John up here because it's Youth Sunday. Today, the big kids are going to be leading worship for us, which is really cool. I actually used to be in youth group here at PCPC, so in middle school and high school when we had Youth Sunday, I always looked forward to it because I got to participate with singing or speaking instead of just watching the service. So I'm extra glad that you're here today because it's a special Sunday. The passage we just heard talks about the disciples seeing Jesus and experiencing hope in the resurrection. That must have been so exciting. They thought they potentially lost Jesus forever and they were reunited with him. They were filled with joy and wonder and disbelief. Just like Jesus came to the disciples, God appears in our lives in many different ways. When I was in high school, I went on a mission trip to Spokane, Washington. Every morning we had the chance to hike up this tall mountainside. And once we got to a spot that we liked, we would sit and have some one-on-one -on -one time with God. I felt God's presence there with me. I experienced God in the beauty of his creation that was all around me in the sky and the trees. I experienced God in the peace that I felt when I got the time to slow down and reflect on the day ahead. Today, we are going to be hearing from the seniors who will be giving speeches about how they have seen God in their own lives. We're so lucky to hear these stories, and I'm thankful that these students are willing to share their experiences with us. So listen up, boys and girls. We're going to hear good and important stories this morning. Let's pray. Loving God, we know you are with us everywhere and all of the time. 
Thank you for having these students here this morning to share with us in different ways in worship this morning. We're thankful for the messages they share and the things they have to contribute. It is important to listen to our young people when they want to lead. We love you so much. Amen. Hi, my name is Luke Thompson, and I'm a graduating senior from Plant High School right across the street. I'm probably going to be attending the University of Florida next year and plan on studying biomedical engineering. I've been going to PCPC ever since I was a little kid going to VBS, but my involvement peaked in high school. Over the past few years, I've been gifted the opportunity to work as a youth leader for middle schoolers and serve as the youth representative for the Witness and Service Committee. I've also gotten to go on the Great Adventure which is a high school retreat to the Blue Ridge Mountains of Georgia and participate in our weekly Bible study. All of these experiences I have had here at PCPC have really shaped me to be the person I am today, but most importantly, they have taught me about the importance of compassion for others. Whether I was helping Kenny with games at youth group or doing service work with middle schoolers over the summer, there, was an all, there always was an underlying message of serving others and putting others before ourselves. At first, I found this pretty difficult, as most young teens would, but over time, I recognized the meaningfulness behind this idea and how fulfilled it made me feel. Once I saw this mission of the church, I understood the passion and love that people have for service. When I attended witness and service meetings, I understood the drive the committee members had for their work. While I volunteered at Feeding Tampa Bay and other charities, I understood the excitement the workers had when they explained to the volunteers what they were going to be doing for the day. And all of this emotion did not come from a place of personal gain. It came from a place of love, of compassion for others. The devotion to improving the lives of others I've seen here at the church has inspired me to pursue a life of service myself. Whatever field I end up going in, I know for sure that I want to be helping others in some shape or form every single day. The church has also provided me with a second family of people that I know I can trust. Everyone I have met here has been so kind, even if it is just a brief introduction in the breezeway. I have made friends that accept me for who I am and have worked with role models that help me realize what I want to become in the future. This sense of unconditional love makes me feel safe and accepted here at Palmasia. The community I've experienced here is unlike any community I've come across before, and I truly hope to find one that resembles it in college. Without PCPC, I'd not be the person I am today. I'm so thankful for everything that I have learned at the church and the faith that it has instilled in me. The past year has been so crazy and knowing that I have the church and God as stable factors in my life has been extremely comforting. While I'm going to miss being a part of this community while I'm away at college, I know that PCPC and the congregation will have my back when I'm in town. Thank you for everything. Hi, my name is Grace Mickelson. I'm a senior at Plant High School and I plan to go to Emerson College in Boston, Massachusetts in the fall. I don't think I will ever forget the first memory I have of Kenny. He was wearing this inflatable suit at our Halloween youth group party. It would not stop dancing with his hands on his hips because he said he looked curvy. If anyone were to ask how I would describe Kenny, I don't think it would be any other world than cheerful. I've cried my eyes out and spilled my guts to Kenny on any occasion I could, and somehow the conversation always ended up with me laughing so hard I was crying. I grew up in this church, and I've had people like Linda Beckham, Jeff Kohler, and David Bonema show me nothing short of God's love. If anything, they're the people who have kept me true to my faith for so long. I prayed for them with my mom at night, and soon enough, they became our church family. They've come and gone now, but Kenny's continued their work for all the upcoming youth, and they are luckier than they know. I'm so grateful for them, and I cannot even begin to explain it. Youth group came around, and I began looking up to the leaders there. Kenzie Malone and Maggie Fitzsimmons were the girls I strived to be when I was in middle school. Then high school rolled around, and it was Jody Traster and Kate Donaldson who began to influence me the most. I remember we were at Southland, and all the girls in my cabin were enamored with Jody's hair, so she taught us how to do it. 
No joke, we were all sat in our buns, swirling our hair like Jody did for no less than two hours. It never quite worked out for us, but we all went to breakfast the next morning with curly hair just like Jody. High school was an on time for me and probably most everyone else. Houston and Georgia my freshman summer were two trips that would define me for life, and I, I had no idea. I never felt so loved by God and so loved by the people here as I did after those trips. The same goes for sophomore summer in the Bahamas and in Georgia. I met Gell Garrett Ballard then, who I now consider one of my closest friends and who I would trust my life with. I don't think it's a coincidence that all my favorite people were ones I met through this church. Kelly Osceola, Avery Franks, Matthew Manny, and Matthew Carrico, just to name a few. I never knew I could feel so much love from people other than my parents. We truly were a family, and Kenny and McKay were our coin ch church parents. Obviously now they have their own child, but I just hope they know Bennett has an army of teenagers to rally behind him whenever he needs. It would be criminal of me not to mention my family, but I'll try my best to keep it short and sweet. My brother, most of you know him as Tabber Will, was my nemesis for the longest time and sometimes still is. I don't know if they're going to watch this, but if you do, I just want you to know I'd never change you even if the world depended on it. They're genuinely one of my favorite people to ever exist and they taught me how to love those who are hard to love. My parents, Sarah and Art, are truly the best things to ever happen to me. They showed me what love should look like and taught me I deserve nothing less than pure happiness in a relationship. My mom is the reason I found the courage to drop my hollow dreams of medicine and move towards what I really wanted, which is to be an author. She didn't have to read any of my work to believe in me. She just did. My dad, on the other hand, will be the reason if I someday drop out of college and become a comedian. No one laughs harder at my dumb jokes than he does, and it's probably because most of my jokes are ones I've stolen from him. I've learned so much from him, and my dad, for one, he taught me how to dance, he taught me what music is good and what music I should avoid, he encouraged me to do anything I ever dreamed of. He never wanted me to do anything I didn't want to do, and gave me everything I could have wished for. My mom, no offense, dad, gave me the greatest gift of all. She helped me find my own identity and never misguided me once. She saw me at the end of all my trials, even when I couldn't, and I don't mean to be sad or somber or anything, I just, I thought I should let everyone know just how amazing they are. I know when I go to Boston, begin my own journey, everything I've learned from all the people I've mentioned will stick with me for life.
Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Our second scripture lesson today continues in the Gospel of Luke, starting in verse 44. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Through their experiences and learning, our senior speakers proclaim to us the good news of Jesus Christ. Let us continue to learn from their witness. Good morning. My name is Matthew Manny. I am a senior at HB Plant High School and I will be attending the University of Florida to major in business next fall. I have been a part of this church for the past 18 years, and I've spent the past four years volunteering as a youth leader for the middle school youth group on Wednesday nights. I also participated in Vacation Bible School, Miss Nancy's Music Camps, the Joyful Noise and Junior Choirs, and the Southwind Camps during middle school. These have done a lot to impact my faith and help shape me into the person I am today. The first day of youth group always sticks out to me, but not for the reason you might think, as I did not start out as a high school leader, but I began as a nervous sixth grader who I was really only there because my mom thought it was a good idea. As I ate dinner that night in the fellowship hall, I was certainly anxious, but as soon as I met Kenny Hubble for the first time, all my fears were gone immediately. Youth group became something I looked forward to. At first because I got to play games and interact with my new friends every week, and, but then I started to pay closer attention to the messages that Kenny would deliver each week. This allowed answering the questions in the small groups at youth group to become more appealing to me. As growing up in the church, I knew I believed in God, but I was still very unsure about many aspects of my faith. However, my adult leader, Derek Guida, and high school leader, Alex Harville, always sought to create a safe space to discuss our questions about our faith. And to this day, I would still say they are the main reason why I decided to apply for a high school youth leader position. Now, I'm able to appreciate youth group even further because talking about God with middle school boys made me want them to have the same positive experience as me when I was in their shoes. It has taught me that even as a high school leader, my faith still has room to grow. And this has helped me understand how important it is to serve as a role model for those young men. 
I also helped participate in trips to the Blue Ridge Mountains in Georgia, but the memory of the second trip during the summer between my sophomore and junior years was the most powerful to me. I believe because I was so caught up in you know, the activities and the time spent with my cabin mates the first year, I think that the second trip allowed me to more focus on the message that Kenny was trying to get across to us. Uh, we were studying a novel that had a movie, it's called The Shack. Um, I had not expected to feel super emotional uh, when I'm talking about my faith. I had never experienced that pr previously, but I believe everybody in the room when we were watching the movie, shed some tears about the struggles that Mac had to go through uh, to overcome his rejection of God's presence in his life when his daughter was unfortunately taken away from him. We spent the entire week analyzing how Mac fought to overcome heart-wrenching obstacles to ultimately strengthen his faith in God. And I believe that was the moment I'd felt closest to God since entering high school. As through the lessons, Kenny and the other leaders were able to explain to me how even, you know, bad things, all, I mean, they seem bad, and they are bad, but they always serve as opportunities to improve our faith in God. And it is a principle that has stuck with me ever since. The congregation of Palmasia Presbyterian Church has also played a large role in developing my faith, and it would be wrong not to recognize them for their roles. I sincerely thank Kenny Hubble, John Debevoise, Nicole Abner, Nancy Callahan, Derek Guida, Alex Harville, Garrett Ballard, Bijan Ferreira, Jody Traster, and Kate Donaldson for acting as mentors to me as I have moved throughout middle and high school. I would also love to thank my fellow youth leaders, Luke Thompson, Annie Thompson, Cade Van Elst, Reese Stichter, Michaela Ayers, Aspen Hunter, and Avery Franks for always being a positive presence on Wednesday nights and for helping strengthen the youth program at PCPC. Though this is the end of high school for me, it is certainly not the end of my journey of faith with this church. I'm excited for the future as I believe God will provide me with the opportunity to continue cultivating my faith when I move on to college and beyond. Palmasia Presbyterian Church, thank you for everything. Good morning, my name is Avery Franks and I'm graduating from Plant High School across the street in May. I'm going to be studying commercial music and business at either Belmont University or NYU. I moved to Tampa when I was in the fifth grade and during the seventh grade my mom signed me up for Southwind with the youth group here at PCPC and I've stuck around since then. Growing up, I bounced around a lot, which is expected as a member of a military family. My dad, Dean Franks, is a retired colonel and a 25-year member of the Special Forces. Before we settled in Tampa, I'd moved a grand total of eight times, lived in six different states, and went to four different elementary schools, which, as I say that out loud, sounds a lot crazier than I make it out to be. There weren't very many things that were familiar since we never stayed in one place for too long, but we always found a great church wherever we lived. I remember sitting in sermons and my mom, Christy Franks, would give her over-imaginative seven-year-old a pen from the depths of her purse to draw on the back of the bulletins that were given at the door. When we moved here, we spent a few years bouncing around from church to church that were closer to our home, but everything changed when my mother signed me up for Southwind. I wasn't quite sure what to expect because I'd never gone to a church camp. I'd done vacation Bible schools at the various churches in the many towns that I had lived in. I'd sang in the choirs and could recite hymns from memories, but I had never experienced anything like Southwind. So I packed my little duffel bag and was not at all ready for the experience that I was being thrown into. Prior to Southwind, I had not had an experience where I'd really connected with God, and I think it was the true beginning of my individual relationship with Him. I came back from the week-long trip filled with a hope I wasn't quite sure that I understood yet. I spent the rest of the summer humming the songs that I had learned and thinking about the sermons and the people I had met. I returned to PCPC in the fall when youth group started back up and I've been here ever since. I did one more trip to Southwind and a trip to the Blue Ridge Mountains. I've been a youth leader for two years and I was an assistant with Miss Nancy in the children's choir last year. I've fallen in love with this church and all the people in it. No matter what I was feeling during the week, I always had youth group to look forward to. I'd like to thank the first person that I really connected with at PCPC, McKay Hubble. 
She was my cabin counselor that first summer at Southwind and has been with me along my journey with God at every step. She, Kenny Hubble, Kate Donaldson, Jody Tracer, and Maggie Fitzsimmons were there in my very first days, and I am forever grateful for the five of you for helping nurture my relationship with God and pushing me to be the best version of myself that I possibly can be. I'd also like to thank Pastor John and Pastor Nicole, who know me from sitting in their sermons on Sunday mornings as the light comes flooding through these beautiful stained glass windows, almost as if the beauty of their sermons was in a physical form. I'd like to thank Miss Nancy Callahan and Mr. Roger Solens, who helped show me that my passion for music can help me worship the Lord. And lastly, I'd like to thank my family, who drove me across Tampa to come to youth group here at PCPC, set me on trips, and support me in all of my endeavors. My favorite piece of scripture is Colossians 3.16, which reads, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with the wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. I'm extremely excited to further my relationship with God, and I want to again express my gratitude to everyone involved in the PCPC Youth Program and thank all of you for letting me have a second home here. stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers. Far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Cause you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To I, I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love, love, love You're a good, good father It's who you are it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved. 
loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. We now turn our attention to a moment of giving. Hi everyone, my name is Kate Donaldson and I will begin my year-long internship here on June 1st. I've spent many years here as a student, leader, and worshiper, and I am so grateful to be leading the youth of this community on staff here at PCPC in just a few weeks. It has been through the generosity of the members of this church that I have personally benefited from so many blessings in the form of experiences and relationships. Your tithes and offerings greatly impacts our youth program and the opportunities that we can provide. Thank you for the many gifts that you have shared with me and the rest of our youth ministry. Our final scripture lesson today is Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, my name is Matthew Carrico. I'm 17 years old and I am attending Plant High School. I've been attending this church since I was 11 years old and I have taken the next step of enlisting in the United States Navy and next year I will be attending my school for my grade. I've been a part of the youth group since sixth grade. I've gone to Southwind, I've gone on the Georgia trips. I've done Disciple now as a student and as a leader. And one other thing is Kenny and David used to towel over me, but now it's not so much. The youth program has really shaped my life from the trips to the people, but especially the people. I've really connected with every leader I've ever had, and I've had the privilege to getting to know amazing leaders like Derek, who was my first youth group leader, and he was with me up until eighth grade. I got to know Andrew Rossi as my first Disciple Now leader. I got to know Alex, Ben, Jody, Kenzie, Kate, and then the adult leaders that have shaped my life are Austin, who has really been a close friend, and I couldn't thank anyone else for sharing more private stories. And David was the first pastor I had the privilege of having at PCPC. And then I didn't get to meet Roger until Southwind of eighth grade, but that connection was very well. And Bijan, who was, who was a newer leader for me, but even with him being new, it was a pretty quick connection after the Georgia trip. Uh, Garrett, who was one of the college leaders for me on the first Georgia trip that I took, and then the following year I did Disciple Now with him as a high school leader, and we had a pretty crazy group, but we got through it. Jacob, uh, sat with us and talked to us, gave us real life stories and shared memories and shared experience with us that helped us develop. Um, Kenny Hubble has been the biggest role model, friend and leader that anyone would be extremely lucky to have. 
as he guided me since I was 11 years old and has definitely helped me into the journey of adulthood. I also want to thank my father, John Carrico, for going on the Southwind trip with me, and as well as my mother, Edie Carrico, for doing the Disciple and Out trips with me. For confirmation, I got to sit down and talk to the church elders, and the one that stood out to me was Mr. Stern, as we had a very in-depth connection about the church, and then we talked about Swim because one of his daughters was a senior when I was a freshman on the team. David and Kenny were the first pastors that really caught my attention, along with Pastor John and his very pronounced voice. And while listening again to them, I began to enjoy their sermons. Marsha and Tom Radeberg are very outstanding people who drove up to Blue Ridge, Georgia, and would buy food and make us meals, and they were very enjoyable meals from very, very wonderful people who had no obligation to do that, but did it out of the kindness of their heart. And I'm excited for my enlistment. I hope God will allow me to be at all the right places at all the right times and meet all the right people. I'm very thankful for the people of this church and have not only comforted me, but allowed this place to become a second home. And I will never forget the important lessons that I've been taught here. you 
pray. Gracious God, we leave here today encouraged by the stories and worship that we have shared. Thank you for the many blessings you have given us in the form of experiences and relationships. Thank you for this church that cares for its young people so, and thank you for the ways you will use young people to further your kingdom. Be with us as we leave this moment of worship that we might continue to be your hands and feet in this world. Show love and compassion for all those we encounter. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Go now with energy to love and serve all of God's children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.